so last time I gave a talk about ant routing. Now I will give a talk about other existing solutions. I mean, I will give an, uh, an overview of a proposal which have been made for routing in the Lightning Network. So um, I, I will start by reminding you what the Lightning Network is. Uh, then I will uh, present the payment mechanism briefly, uh, the payment mechanism in the Lightning Network and the current routing. Uh, before, well, I will present uh, several routing algorithms and also uh, atomic multipath payments, which is a way of splitting payments. And at the end, I will talk about the problem of imbalanced channels. So just to remind you what the Lightning Network is and why it exists. So the Lightning Network exists to solve Bitcoin scalability problem, namely the fact that Bitcoin can only handle seven transactions per second. And if you compare it to a worldwide payment system like Visa, this is quite small because the order of magnitude for Visa is um, thousands of transactions per second. So if we want to develop Bitcoin further, we need to make it possible for people to make several thousand transactions per second. And this is why the Lightning Network was introduced. So the Lightning Network, it's a payments network for Bitcoin. And the idea is that you don't really need to publish every transaction uh, on the blockchain. You can do some of them off chain. And how do you do that? Well, the idea is that um, if uh, Alice and Bob, uh, if they want to uh, create a lightning channel between them, what they do is uh, they both commit funds into a common address. It's a two of two multi-signature address. So uh, when they both commit funds, this creates a lightning channel and this writes a transaction on the blockchain. But then once they have done that, when they want to make a transaction, they just have to uh, uh, give each other a new, uh, a new balance for this address. And they do not need to publish it on the blockchain. What they do is uh, they do a, a bunch of payments and only at the end, when they want to close the channel, they publish uh, the very last balance. So they only publish two transactions on the blockchain, the first one, which creates the, chan the channel, and the last one, which closes the channel. But in between opening and closing the channel, they can do many transactions without ever publishing it on the blockchain. And this is the idea of uh, the Lightning Network. Now, of course, uh, you cannot ask every Bitcoin node uh, to, to have a channel uh, with everyone else on the Lightning Network because that would completely defeat the purpose of solving the scalability issue. So uh, the Lightning Network is not a complete graph, which means that some of the nodes don't have a channel between them. But this is not an issue because the Lightning Network has a good property that you can compose channel, which means if Alice and Bob, if Alice wants to pay Bob, and if they don't have a direct channel, uh, they can still pay each other if they find uh, a node to which they both have a channel. So for example, if Alice has a channel with Charlie and Charlie a channel with Bob, then Alice can pay Bob by sending mo money to Charlie and then Charlie will forward this money to Bob. So this is, uh, this is what channel composition is. Now, of course, this is a very simple scenario because uh, the distance between Alice and Bob is only two. But uh, things can get more complicated, like if you are in a network in general. And so this leads to the routing problem. So the routing problem is uh, given a network with two points A and B, find a route from A to B on this network. But because we are in a payments network, we don't just want to find a route between them. Uh, the main point is that we need to find uh, a, a route which has enough funds on it. And I put it in bold there uh, because this is uh, the real issue uh, with the current routing uh, algorithm is that often the, the, the algorithm finds routes 
which do not have enough funds uh, on it, which is why it fails very often. So uh, this is a routing problem. We want to find an algorithm which finds routes with enough funds. And of course, uh, since we are in Bitcoin, we also would like this algorithm to satisfy a few criteria. So we want an efficient algorithm. So by efficiency, uh, we mean a low rate of failure, which is the main issue with the current routing algorithm. It fails very often. We want privacy. So privacy can be, uh, well, by privacy, we mean that uh, when a node is just here to forward a payment, it should have, it shouldn't know where the payment comes from and where the payment is going. So Alice and Bob may want to be protected in the sense that they don't want the other nodes to know that they're having a transaction. Uh, of course, in the Bitcoin spirit, we would like to have a network which is decentralized. Obviously, so as I said, uh, Lightning Network was introduced to solve scalability issues, so we want an algorithm which is also scalable. So scalable can be understood in two ways. There is scalability in terms of how many transactions the algorithm can sustain, but there is also scalability in terms of size of the network, which is also an issue with the current routing algorithm. Um, and finally, the last thing you may want is uh, you may want to have uh, an algorithm which keeps channels uh, balanced because this is also an, an issue in the Lightning Network that uh, some of the channel gets depleted in one, in one direction and you would like ideally to keep things more balanced. So there are some algorithms now which attempt of attempting at um, solving this problem of keeping channels balanced. So we will review a few uh, routing algorithms. So there, are, there are different kinds of routing. There is what I would call full source routing, uh, which is currently in use in the, in the Lightning Network. So what I mean by full source routing, so source routing means that it is the sender who decides the route. So currently in the Lightning Network, path calculation is completely left to the, to the sender, to Alice. Uh, that means that in theory, each node has to keep a whole map of the whole network, which uh, can lead to scalability issues in terms of sizes of the network. Now there is also beacon, uh, beacon routing. So a beacon is a special node uh, which um, will help other nodes uh, see the network. So it helps a uh, beacon network is there to enhance the visibility of the network for other nodes. Uh, so an example of this is Flare, which we will see later. Landmark-based routing, so an example is Silent Whispers. Uh, a landmark is, is a node through which each payment will pass. Uh, now there is the, the algorithm called a trampoline. Uh, so a trampoline node is also a special node to which the other node outsource the route calculation. Uh, Embedding-based means that you associate coordinates to each node and then you route according to these coordinates. So an example is uh, speedy murmurs. And then there is ant routing, uh, which I talked about last time. So we will uh, explore each of these algorithms in this talk. Okay, so now I want to talk a bit about how payment works uh, in the Lightning Network and talk about the, current, the problems with the current routing. So the, the way payments work in the Lightning Network, uh, it works with, so a payment is, is a contract which is called an HTLC, hashed time locked contract. If you don't know what it is, it's not really important. What is important to know is that it works with a hash function. So the way it works is um, when Alice pays Bob, so we choose a, a random number R, which we call the pre-image, and then we hash it uh, to obtain H. And then this hash is used to mark the HTLC, so the contract. And then when Alice wants to send $10 to Bob, she sends an HTLC which indicates $10 and which is marked with H. 
And what it means when Bob receives this HTLC, it means that Bob can take $10 from Alice if Bob can produce R, the pre-image. Now, why do, do we use these uh, hashes? Why does it work like this? Because uh, this is what enables channel composition. So imagine you want to compose channel. So Alice wants to pay Bob, uh, but there is always a danger of someone just uh, keeping the funds for themselves. So in order to prevent that, we use the, the hash functions. So what happens when Alice wants to pay Bob is that Bob chooses the random number R, the pre-image, he hashes it, and he communicates H to Alice. And now Alice will use this H to send uh, the HTLC to Charlie. And now remember that at this point, Charlie cannot get $10 from Alice because Charlie doesn't know R. Now Charlie will do the same to Dave, and then Dave will do the same to Bob. So each of these person now has a HTLC marked with H. And now when Bob has received this HTLC, then he can send R to Dave. And this gives Bob his $10. And because Dave now, now Dave knows R, he can, take, he can get his $10 from Charlie. And then Charlie communicates R to Alice. And when Alice receives R, she knows that everyone on the path has been paid. And so then Charlie gets his $10. What are dollars? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I use dollars. <laughs> Sorry. It's a legacy. Okay. Yeah, so this is uh, how payment works. Now, a few words about routing. So currently, um, so there is uh, very little about routing in the original paper on the Lightning Network. So currently it uses source routing, which means path calculation is left to the sender, uh, which means each node uh, needs to keep a whole map of the network. This requires a constant gossip on the network because uh, to transmit information about changes in the network. Now, when Alice wants to pay Bob, she uses uh, her map of the network to send money to Bob. And how is uh, privacy ensured? Well, privacy is ensured via onion routing. So when Alice sends payment to Bob uh, via several nodes, uh, she, she does it by sending messages in uh, a multi-layered onion. So the way it works is Alice, uh, she creates an onion with uh, several layers, and each of the layers is meant for one of the nodes. So Alice creates a two-layered onion. Why two? It's because uh, there are two intermediary nodes. So this is uh, the onion that Alice sends to Charlie. So along with her HTLC, she sends this onion. And the first layer of the onion can only be decrypted by Charlie. So Charlie decrypts this layer, but Charlie cannot decrypt the blue layer because the blue can only be decrypted by Dave. So this, uh, the layer for Char Charlie contains uh, the address of Dave. So this is how Charlie knows that he has to forward the money to Dave. So Charlie then sends the, the HTLC and the onions to Dave. And then, then Dave receives the onion. He can decrypt it. And this onion contains Bob's address. So then Dave knows that he has to send the money to Dave. And note that uh, with these onions, each node in the way only knows, they only know the preceding node and the next node, but they don't know who the other nodes on the path are. Now the problems uh, with the current routing algorithm is that, so the nodes um, know the channel capacities, but not the balances which means, so the capacity is the total sum of money in a channel. 
and the balance is uh, it tells you how the money is split between the two nodes. So when, when the nodes do the root calculation, they do it using channel capacity. So, I, so Alice uh, tries to compute a path with enough capacity, but since she doesn't know the balance, she cannot make sure that there will be enough money on the path to forward the payment. So what happens is that uh, Alice will try, uh, so she will try, she will find routes with enough capacity. Uh, she will try to send a payment, and if it fails, then she will try another route. Uh, but currently, uh, the failure rate is very high. So failure means that uh, there was not enough money on the path to forward it to Bob. And this is due mainly to channel imbalance. Uh, and the reason, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the failure rate is high because, so there is a paper, a recent paper of Christian Decker, where he claims that for 5% of payments, routing, uh, finding a path, takes more than three minutes. So it's really, really long. Okay, so that was uh, the current routing. Now that uh, this is done, I want to talk about uh, atomic multipath payments, which is a way of splitting payments. So as I said, one of the issues with routing is uh, making sure that there is enough money on the path to be forwarded to Bob. And often, the routing fails because there is not enough money on a path. One way of solving this is to split payments between different paths. For example, if you are in this setting, so these numbers uh, represent the channel balance, so this, for example, this means that this is a channel with capacity of seven, and uh, in this, uh, among these sevens, Alice has five of them, and this node has two of them. Now, if Alice wants to pay Bob six dollars, sorry, follows the dollars. Uh, now she has to; she cannot do it directly on one path, because here, if you look at the picture there is not a single path which would allow Alice to send uh, $6. One way of solving this is to split the payment into three different payments of $2 each, which would work given the balances which are here. But um, one of the problems is that you may want to make sure that Bob doesn't get paid unless he receives all the payments because maybe you don't want Bob to, I mean, you either want Bob to get all the money or none of the money. You don't want Bob to get just $4 and then the rest of the dollars getting lost somewhere. So how can we achieve this? Well, we can do this with uh, a mechanism called atomic multipath payment. So here is how it works. So assume you have Alice, which splits, she wants to pay the amount V to Bob. She splits this amount V into N many payments. Now for each of these payments, uh, each of these payments goes through a path. And the idea is that uh, for each of these payments, uh, Alice generates a different pre-image. So a different hash will be associated to each path. And so basically the idea is that uh, Knight will be Alice choosing the pre-image and she will choose it so, so that uh, Bob, so Bob doesn't know the pre-images. The idea is to make sure that Bob cannot reconstruct the pre-images until he receives all the payments. So Alice chooses uh, random numbers as one as n, and she adds, uh, she sums them. So BP means uh, base pre-image. So she computes this number. And then with this base pre-image, now she can compute the pre-images which will serve for each of the paths. So the pre-image RI, it's a, 
Uh, sorry, those. Uh, this is a mistake. I think. No, uh, no, I think it's correct. Um, yeah. So she ca she computes R I with uh, H of B P concatenated. This is concatenation. B P concatenated with uh, I. And now she hashes it. Uh, maybe to make it more random, more h harder to, I don't know. No, I, I don't think you need it, actually. No, no, no you... Yeah, yeah, no, I... Yeah, yeah, no, you don't, you don't need to take this first H. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Unless you hash twice, like uh, in Bitcoin mining, to, to avoid other. Uh, yeah, okay. So you may need to hash to have a fixed length. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so HI is a hash associated to the ith path. And uh, in each, so uh, Alice sends her payments through each path. And for each path, uh, Alice, so she also includes an onion in, in the multi-layered onion. She, she includes an onion at the center for Bob. And in this onion, she includes the information N and SI. And now, uh, when Bob receives just one single payment, he cannot deduce uh, the pre-image. I mean, he can deduce none of the pre-images. But once Bob has received all the payments, then he can reconstruct BP, and then he can uh, deduce each of the pre-images, and he can get the money for each, uh, each path. OK, so this was uh, atomic multipath payments. Now I want to, uh, so th this was uh, not really a routing algorithm, but more a way of splitting payments. Now I will describe several routing algorithms, starting with Flare, which is a beacon routing algorithm. So before starting with Flare, I want to tell you a bit about the, uh, for history's sake, the earliest proposals which have been made at the very beginning of discussions on Lightning Network. So on the Linux forum. So one of the uh, first proposals for uh, payments was um, it was proposed to have two kinds of nodes on the network, uh, paying nodes and routing nodes. So the routing nodes would just be there to, uh, well, route transactions, and the paying nodes would just be usual, the, the users, Bitcoin users. Now, the, uh, the obvious problem with this kind of setting is that uh, it's not really decentralized, and it also very, I mean, you can, if you, for example, cripple this node, then uh, you cripple all this part of the network, so it's also not uh, very fault tolerant. Now, another idea which was proposed was to use beacon nodes. It was proposed by Rusty Russell that uh, the network chooses a set of beacon nodes. And so the purpose of beacon nodes Beacon nodes are special nodes which uh, would help the other nodes in computing routes. Um, yeah, so the beacon nodes would be a change on a regular schedule. Now, um, yeah, and routing would work with uh, A and B. So B uh, chooses a few random beacons. Uh, and, and then A, they would try to find a route from A to B uh, by going through these beacons. Now the problem with that is that... Uh, what is this choice of uh, the network randomly chooses a set of beacons? What is the algorithm? Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, I don't think he gave detail about how it should be chosen. But uh, there are problems with this that, well, first of all, you would um, the beacon nodes, you would need them to be like big nodes with high bandwidth and high computing power and this kind of thing. Um, and this would really reduce the pool of possible candidates for the beacons. 
and also it would uh, potentially lead to uh, centralization if uh, if you always end up having the same nodes as beacons. Yes, and the question is also how, how you avoid that uh, that someone owns many beacon nodes. Or... Yeah, also, yeah, and also it could lead yeah to uh, civil attacks because you know if the more nodes you have, the more likely you are to be chosen as a as a beacon node. This kind of stuff. But now, uh, improving on this idea of, of beacons, uh, Amos Bern came with the idea of, instead of having the network have a set of beacons, he proposed that each node, each individual node, should have personal beacons. So each node chooses their own um, beacons, and then they should choose a large enough number of beacons so that there is a good probability. Um, how do you decide that a node is a beacon? A beacon? Node? Yeah, in, in this ID, it should be the, the choice of the node. Um, yeah, in, in, this, uh, in this thing, yeah, I, th I think he was thinking. I don't know, I, I don't know if, uh, I think he didn't give a lot of detail, but I, I'm just telling you this because uh, then it's, it leads up to Flair, which, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, one of the so the issues with um, beacons is how do you um, make sure that the, the network doesn't become centralized? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So this idea of personal beacons led to flare. Yeah, and the why? 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 Why the school? Mathematical reason for taking that? Anniversary. Yeah, it, it was. Why do you take this square root of the number of nodes and not another function? Oh, I don't. I, I think he just uh, he just mentions that he, yeah, he wrote, he said that uh, it should be enough to take the square root num of number of nodes, but. Do you have any? But that was any just. Mathematical argument? No, no, it was. I mean, it was just a. It, then you have a probability of, uh, I don't know, uh, well, 50% to have a common uh, beacon node. I just avoid that. Now, you, you want the node to have a good probability of having uh, beacon nodes. So this is why... And by the uh, anniversary paradox, uh, if uh, you take the uh, number of beacons equal to the square root of number of nodes, uh, it should be the case. Yeah. This is, this is the limit, right? Yes, I have So, yeah, so the idea of personal beacons led to a flare, which uses... So it uses personal beacon. So let me explain the setup for flare. So in flare, the nodes keep, uh, they basically keep two things in memory. Well, three things, actually. So they do have routing tables, but instead of having the whole map of the network, they only keep a local map of their neighborhood. So the only thing, that the routing table just contains uh, a map of what happens around the node. Now, so local, so what, one of the parameters that you have to decide is uh, what they call the radius. So you need to know the how. Gra the graph radius. The well, the, radius? Uh, yeah, so you have to fix like a radius of how far you want this neighborhood to go. So there is a trade-off between. The, 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 the full geometry is down, right? Oh, but you want a, like you want an exact map, not just like. Yes, but the, the full geometry of the network is known, or not? I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you can they keep a, a, a routing table of a local map. This is what is the minimum necessary to function for a node. But uh, the, the geometry of the rest of the network is available, or not? Uh, yeah, you can probably find it, but, but I, I think it's. The, the, the beacon, I'm not sure it's scalable in terms of. The beacon node who have the whole geometry? Or they only have the geometry of the beacon nodes? No, no so, so I will explain the, what the beacon nodes do. 
Yeah, so no, the, the beacon nodes, actually, they don't, uh, I mean, each node keeps exactly these three things, which I will list. So this local map of the neighborhood uh, and a list of randomly chosen beacons, personal beacons. So each node has their own set of beacons. Uh, yeah, and they're chosen randomly. Now, randomness is, uh, randomness is there to make sure that uh, the beacons are scattered a bit everywhere on the network, which gives uh, more visibility. Because the, the idea here is to have uh, a precise local map, so you have a very good view of your neighborhood, and you increase this view of the neighborhood by uh, randomly chosen beacons. When you say randomly chosen, how do you enforce that? I mean, do you do whatever? I will, I will explain after how it's chosen. Is there anyone that can enforce them to choose some beacons and not another? Oh, uh, enforcing, you mean? Uh, because I, I, yeah, may, not I may want to just choose the beacon nodes of my friends and have a subnet. Yeah, okay. Friends. I mean, they, they, don't, uh, they don't talk about enforcing the algorithm, but, yeah, but, but there is a way of choosing. There is a way to enforce it. I mean, but, uh, no, but, no, yeah. It means that they choose randomly. They can just choose what they want, right? It's an old. Yeah, okay, in theory, you can choose, yeah. Now, I, I agree, you cannot really enforce it. Probably they, they, they have a, an interest in choosing, choosing the people nodes randomly so that they are spread uniformly on the, on the network. Yeah, that, that is the idea maybe of... Maybe if they are malicious, they don't want to do that. Yeah, probably, I mean, if you have a malicious node, then... Yeah, imagine that there's a confederation of nodes that uh, act together Okay. Try to manipulate the network, then you know. Uh. So they, they decided to set some high fees. If they control enough of the network, they can, for example, uh, intercept any routing, reasonable routing payment. So they, you know, they, 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 they could be. I mean, if, if you only need to control some equal nodes, you can, you can probably enforce some. I mean, you, yeah, you, you could, if you have a lot of nodes, then you have a good probability of being chosen as a beacon. Like, is that what you mean? Well, it's not, not, not only that they are choosing as beacon, because they, they can, you know, all the, all the, all the nodes that uh, all this confederation of people have, they, they operate through the same beacon nodes, and they don't mm -hmm. choose the others. Ah, okay. And, and if they are... Uh, uh, an important majority, they may be able to intercept any routing payment. So then, it's, yeah, okay, they can yeah. set up high fees to passing through their network. Yes. So their their subnetwork. Yeah. Well, okay. Um. In, in general, this this type of algorithm, if you put too many rules, you you introduce vulnerabilities. And then when you say randomly, etc., you have to see, well, is this random? Or, 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 I mean, the, the node has to have an interest in choosing it randomly, right? But if there is a oh. scenario where, where, uh, where it's, it's, it's... Yeah, I guess the interest is just increase your visibility and, yeah, in making it easier to find uh, paying routes. Yeah, yeah so the, the node also keeps uh, a route to each of the beacons. So uh, this is a corresponding picture. So yeah, so here A, uh, this is a local map. So A knows everything what's happening here. And then you have a bunch of beacons. So A knows what's happening here, all the map, plus uh, all the routes to the beacons. And the point is that, uh, yeah, the point of doing that is, yeah, to, to keep um, the memory usage uh, smaller than if you have the whole uh, map of the network while still having good visibilities uh, thanks to the beacons. Now the other idea of Flare is um, to remark that you, there are two kinds of information which you need to route payments. You have the static information, so static means uh, which change slowly, and yeah, then you have the dynamic information which is, uh, well, parameters which can change uh, very quickly, like routing fees and channel balance. 
And the idea is that uh, you only need to memorize static information in the routing tables. So the routing tables, are just, they're really just a map, just the channels and the nodes. Uh, they don't store the information about, for example, fees and channel balance. And this information, the dynamical information, will only be collected uh, when Alice wants to make a payment. It's not proactively uh, collected. Uh, yeah, so how do, how do they choose the beacon? So how is randomness ensured? Well, the idea to find, uh, to select the beacons randomly is that you define a, you associate an address to each node, and then you can define a distance between two addresses, uh, taking the XOR function, and uh, then Alice will choose, uh, she will choose her beacons as the ones who have, who, who has the uh, closest address to herself. in a closest in a address space. So the way this works is uh, how to find beacon is Alice, uh, she starts by looking in her routing table. So she has a routing table of her local neighborhood. And in this table, she looks for the node N, which has uh, address closest to her own address. And this N temporarily becomes her beacon and then N looks in his own uh, routing table to see if there is another node M, which is even closer to Alice in address space. And this process continues. Um, so here N is replaced by M as a beacon, and this process can continue several steps. And uh, yeah, this is, um, this is how Alice. This is how Alice makes sure that she ends up with beacons who are close to her in uh, address space. Now, how does the routing in Flare actually works? Well, when Alice wants to pay Bob, they start by combining their routing tables, and hopefully, by combining combining these tables, they find a route. If not, then uh, they try to find a route by using the beacons. So they can request uh, routing tables from the beacons. And then with these beacons, they try to find a route. Now by doing that, uh, hopefully they end up with uh, a set of routes. So they choose uh, the shortest ones. But remember that here you only have the, uh, uh, the static information, so just the, the path itself. Now what Alice does is once she has these routes, she will collect the uh, dynamic information on each of these paths. So the fees and the channel balance. So channel balance means uh, she wants to make sure that there is enough money on the path uh, to make her payment. And this is done by onion wrapped polling messages uh, to ensure privacy. And then once she has this dynamic information, then she can rank the different routes uh, so, for example, by taking the, the one with the lowest fees first, and then she chooses, she chooses the best one. Well, she can also take like, path lengths into consideration. And uh, yeah, so this is how uh, routing works in Flare. Now, they did some uh, simulations uh, to see, uh, they wanted to know the success rate so they did some simulations. Uh, now notice that something I haven't said is that, uh, so you have this local map of the neighborhood and you can choose the size of this, uh, of this local map, which is given by the neighborhood radius. So the neighborhood radius is how far do you want to go in this local map of the neighborhood? How big do you want this local neighborhood to be? And there is a trade-off between the size, uh, the size of R and the quality of the algorithm, because of course, uh, the biggest routing table you have, the more efficient it will be, uh, but the more memory space it will take and the more complicated the, yeah, with calculations. So they did some simulations with R equal two, which means that in the routing table, Alice only has nodes, uh, I mean, in the local routing table, she only has nodes which are at least, uh, which are at most 
distance two hops away from her. And here you have, uh, so this, is, this tells you the percentage of nodes that uh, Alice can uh, find a route to, depending on the number of beacons that she's using. So Q is the number of time a node has to request, request a routing table from a beacon. And so you see that... Uh, How often do they have to update this information, right? Uh, which information? The, 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 well, the, the routing tables of the beacon nodes and the local maps to the nodes. Well, because, because uh, you know, people can be online or maybe not. So uh, I or at some moment disconnect yeah, I don't think they address this. Uh, they don't say how often you have to update in the paper, I think. I mean, if it's a static, it's a static, right? But the things are not static because people always make yeah. close the channels and mm -hmm. they, they, they won't tell, they won't give previous notice of that. So, so maybe your, your tables will, will get wrong with time. So, but they have no idea of the time frame. So, you have to update this every hour, every day, every month. Every ten I don't think they give a. I don't think they give an indication yeah, on how often you have to do it. Uh, no, it's not very precise. It's, it's, it's lacking of. Developing, we are developing. With, they need to be precise, right? I don't know if uh, anyone is developing this. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. So it's just because yeah, the the paper is very. I mean, it gives uh, the outlines, but the, a lot of detail is missing on how we should really do everything. They, they give different uh, further work direction at the end of the paper, but I mean, you can see that there is a still a lot of work to do to know exactly how things should work. Uh, but yeah, you can see that uh, with four beacons, you already have a very good uh, like accessibility, which means you can almost uh, already access almost all the network, which is four beacon nodes uh, and regis two. So you take, uh Six beacon nodes. This, this is this is very little, right? Uh, yeah, it's the uh, pool of uh, candidates beacon nodes. How big will it be? Is there a square root of the, of the network? Well, the beacon nodes are cho chosen randomly among all nodes of the network. Yeah, but all, all well, but, but there's, there's a pool. I mean, there are there's some some nodes that would like to be beacon nodes, and other, others maybe don't, don't want. To be. Well, okay. When you when you uh, when you're choosing your beacon nodes, you send uh, messages. Uh, I mean, as asking the node to be your beacon nodes. Of course, they can refuse. And but uh, uh, how often is this done? How often is this renewed? Um, I don't. I don't think they address it. Yeah, but this is crucial, right? I mean. It's not the same to renew every every minute, yeah. or every hour, or every day. Uh, it's just theory, or it's, it's just yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's mostly theory, yeah. Theory, but not precise. I mean, just uh, yeah. As I said, the, a lot of detail is missing in the paper in the flare paper. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So this was the flare. Um, now I want to talk about speedy murmurs. Now speedy murmurs is uh, used, uses embedding-based routing, but before I want to talk about landmark-based routing because um, uh, speedy murmurs also uses some idea of landmark-based routing. So what is landmark-based routing? So a landmark is basically a, a well-connected node with um, also with like it's a big node, basically, with a uh, high, uh, a lot of funds and etc. Now, in landmark-based routing, um, so the network has landmarks, and each landmark uh, generates a spanning tree of the network. So, a spanning tree is a tree, so it's a graph without cycles. Uh, so, it's a it's a tree contained in the network, uh, which contains all the nodes. And the way this uh, tree is constructed is, so L, the landmark, is the root of the tree, 
then L asks each of each neighbor to be the children of L. And then each node, uh, when a node becomes part of the tree, uh, it asks all of its neighbor to become its children. And if, uh, uh, if the neighbors are not already in the tree, then it becomes a child of the node. And you continue until you obtain, you have all the nodes uh, in the network. So the way a landmark-based routing works is, so the, the network has a set of landmarks, and when Alice wants to pay Bob, uh, Alice, uh, Alice chooses a landmark, and so each node, uh, because of this, with this spanning tree, each node knows a route to the landmark because each node knows who their parent in the tree is. So Alice knows uh, a path to the landmark, Bob knows the path to the landmark, and if you combine the two, you obtain a path from Alice to Bob. Uh, so there is a, a routing algorithm which is called Silent Whispers, which is based on this. Now, if you want to apply this to the Lightning Network, then there is, uh, there is problems with this. Uh, first of all, the path length is not optimal at all, uh, because every uh, with, with this, every transaction has to go through a landmark, and also it's not very decentralized because the landmarks there have a lot of importance uh, because every transaction has to pass through them. Um, and yeah, you can see that uh, the path length is not optimal because, for example... The network chooses a set of landmarks. Who is Who decides that? Well, I guess it depends on the on the algorithm, but I, I'm not talking about specific algorithm. I'm, I'm just here presenting uh, landmark-based routing. So there is a silent whisper is an algorithm, but I don't know how they choose the landmarks. They just, uh, yeah, I just know that they use landmarks, uh, landmark-based routing. You know, each time you make a choice, the choice has to be decentralized, so nobody... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you need to make sure that and not exploit that. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, uh, using landmarks has uh, obvious flaws, but uh, improving on this, uh, so they, the authors of uh, Speedy Murmurs, they wanted to improve on silent whispers. So it also, I mean, it, it uses uh, these spanning trees, but the, the routing in Speedy Murmurs uses embedding-based routing so embedding-based routing uh, is you assign coordinates to, to each node, and then you route using these coordinates. So I, I will be more precise later. And there is what is called greedy embedding-based routing, is uh, you assign coordinates based on a spanning tree. So this is the connection with the landmark-based routing, is that you use uh, spanning trees so this is the same tree as before. Now the way you assign coordinates is, uh, so the root is just the empty vector, uh, the root of the tree, and then if a node has coordinates, it enumer enumerates each of its children, and uh, the coordinate of a child is the coordinate of the parent to which you concatenate a number. So for example, the children of one, they have coordinates one, one, and one, two. Uh, the children of two have coordinates two, one, and two, two. And three has three children, which are, have coordinates three, one, three, two, and three, three. So you can uh, assign coordinates to each node. And you can also find, uh, you can also define a distance in the space of coordinates which is the formula I wrote here, I will explain it. Uh, the distance between uh, coordinates is basically uh, the length of the path between the nodes in the spanning tree. Uh, and there is, so for example, the distance between this one and, and this one is four. And there is a, you can, it's easy to, the distance is easy to compute with the formula which is here. So this means the length of V, so V is uh, coordinates, U and V are coordinates. So the length of V plus length of U minus two, so this is 
common prefix length. So the length of the common prefix of u and v. So this formula is just here to say that there is a, an easy way to compute the distance, which will be used in the routing. So once you have these coordinates, how, do you, how does greedy embedding-based routing works? So first of all, the setup is each node has coordinates, and each node knows the coordinates of all its neighbors. And when Alice wants to pay Bob, so Alice gets Bob's coordinates, and now Alice looks among all her neighbors, and among all her neighbors, she chooses the one whose coordinates are closest to Bob's coordinates. And then each node uh, does the same. When a node receives a payment to be forwarded to Bob, they look at all their neighbors and they choose the one whose coordinates are the closest to Bob's coordinates. Now the, the good thing here is that uh, shortcuts are allowed uh, in contrast to landmark-based routing. Uh, what I mean by shortcut is that you can take channels which are not in the spanning tree. So for example, uh, if Alice is here and Bob is here, then Alice will send uh, the money to this node because uh, this node has the coordinates, I mean the coordinates of this node is closer to Bob than the coordinates of this one. And she chooses the one with, uh, whose coordinates are closest. And this contrasts with uh, landmark-based routing because this time uh, the payments don't all have to go through the root of the tree. Also a, re a remark is that, uh, so this is uh, embedding-based routing in general, but here, since we are in a payment network, if you want to apply this to Lightning, uh, instead of, when I say Alice chooses among all her neighbors, actually what you want to do is Alice only, consider, only considers neighbors uh, such that the channel has enough funds on it. And this way also makes sure that uh, when you want to make a payment, then you will not have a failure because of funds. So speedy murmurs is the algorithm I wanted to talk about, which is based on this. So how does it work? Uh, so well, the network chooses a set of landmarks, k, la k landmarks, and each of these landmarks, they generate a tree, a spanning tree, and now for each of these tree, uh, you have uh, coordinates. So each node has k different set of coordinates. And when Alice wants to pay Bob, so Alice wants to pay the amount c to Bob, Alice splits the payment into k many payments. And each of these, uh, each of these payments will be sent to Bob um, with greedy embedding based routing but for each i, the routing will be done using the ith coordinates. So for each i, uh, the coordinates of the nodes are different. So for each i, ci will go through a different path. And it will use, uh, yeah, so the greedy embedding based routing which I presented in the previous slide. Now in, in this step, uh, Alice, when she splits the payment, she does this randomly. And then if, uh, if the routing fails, because it's possible that the routing fails again because there is not enough funds somewhere on, uh, on the channels, then Alice can try again with a different random split of the, of the amount. Is the, is the landmark so the, the they use uh, so for each i the routing of ci uses the coordinates associated to uh, li the to the landmark yes, yes but what is the root in the, in so the, is it the, the landmark in this case no so it doesn't go through the landmarks so this is um, a nice thing to notice is that the landmarks are really just here to generate the spanning tree. And they, they are not part of the path. 
they are just here because to generate the spanning tree. So they don't really have a big role in uh, transactions. They are here just to generate uh, sets of coordinates. Yes. Yeah, but in, for each coordinate, what is the root? So this is I will uh, the previous slide. Mm -hmm. So this gives uh, the um, the the routing algorithm. Mm -hmm. So the routing works by for when, when a node has to forward a payment. It looks at all its neighbors, and it chooses the neighbor whose coordinates are the closest to Bob's coordinates. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't have to go through the landmark. Yeah, but, yeah. but you have a route. Yes, and there is a route. So where is uh, what, what do you mean? Uh, the node, which is the route, is it Alice? Oh, uh, no, Alice, Alice doesn't compute the route. Alice, uh, she, sends, she, she sends a payment to a node, but she doesn't know where this node is going to send the payment. Because uh, the way it works is, um, well, actually, what happens is, uh, what you can do is, bef before paying, Alice does a probing, which means uh, she sends messages to collect information about funds, for example, on... Uh, on the path. But uh, Alice doesn't compute the whole route, she just sends it to this node, and then this node will choose which node to send it to based on coordinates. But who is the route? So the, the root of the tree is here. Yes, who is it? Uh, it's a landmark. I said landmark, okay. Yes, so the root is landmark, uh, yes. So it was my question. Ah, okay, yes. But uh, we have multiple landmarks in the network. Uh, yes. So this means that each node have a different coordinates depending on the landmark. Yes, so each node has k sets of coordinates. Okay. Yes. So if we have uh, k landmarks, yes. it's important for each node to, to know its own coordinates for his. Yes, so each, no, each node knows its coordinates for each landmark and knows the coordinates of all its neighbors for each landmark. Uh, so, yeah, so here also the interesting thing is that uh, uh, privacy, because C is not uh, known by the uh, forwarding node, because, because of the split of the payment, uh, if a node is just forwarding a transaction, it doesn't know C, it just know a CI. Then, then when one node leaves the network, it can destroy landmarks, right? Uh, well, destroy the spanning tree, you mean? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, so they actually address it in a... So what happens is, for example, if, um, well, if a node decides to leave the network, then, so this one, this one leaves the network, for example, so all of its children will have to look around to find a new parent. But... What do they know? That, well, the, 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 the immediate ones know that he has left. Yes. Uh, yeah, but I mean, this node can send the message. The description or the procedure? Yeah, yeah, they, they actually they address this problem. Uh, because this is also a difference to uh, silent whispers, uh, the previous algorithm with landmarks, is uh, in silent whispers, uh, when there was a change, you had, you had to reconstruct the whole tree. But in speedy murmurs, in this one, uh, there is a way to just locally change the tree without redoing everything. Yeah, but if, if, if the root leaves... Uh, oh yes, if, if, the, if the root leaves, then yeah, the whole tree is destroyed. So they may, they may close some channels and not others. Yes, but um, it, it, you, you may close some... To the network, what is the typical... I mean, if, if, it's, if, if people close channels very often, it's going to be a problem, right? Yeah, if, um, you don't have to update okay. the coordinates everywhere. I mean, it takes some time to do that. Yes, okay. If, if, I mean, if there is a lot of uh, channels closing, then yes, it could be an issue. Well, there would be channels but, closing all the time, right? If you have a big network, it would be, yeah. it would be happening. But, but you don't have... Do you have an analysis of, uh, of the dynamics of this uh, reorganization? Uh, I, I don't know, actually. I mean, I, I know they do address this problem in the paper of Speedy Murmurs. And they say... You have to think this, how you solve the reorganization and how long it takes. 
Yeah. So that so that the network is stable because if, if it takes longer to reorganize mm -hmm. than the uh, medium time that you have channels that flow, you may be you may you can be always reorganizing the network. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All, all, all these uh, decentralized uh, networks have these traps that, uh, I mean, well, what I mean is that it's, it's, it's a, these are difficult questions. So, and, and I don't know if, how, how much in detail they address that, this question. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I know they insist on the fact that uh, you don't have to rebuild the old tree. Okay. Uh, when, when there is a channel closing. Uh, yeah, so they, they did some simulations on uh, for efficiency, and uh, they, they said that in the paper, uh, the success rate of a trans transaction is uh, 90%. So, uh, so if, if this is true, this is uh, very good because... So the simulation is for us. Uh, yeah, it's static, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, good point. It's, uh, the simulation was done for a static, uh, in the static setting. Again, by the same issue, how does the network choose a set of uh, dot marks? Yes, yeah, they, they don't address it in, in the paper. No canonical choice, I mean. <laughs> no, there, there is no canonical choice. So. I think they, they just assume at the beginning that they have a set of landmarks. When, when, a, when a new node arrives and opens channels, he, he just uh, uh, gets into the landmark, right? If, if uh, a new node that opens channels, yes. I mean, incorporate uh, the, the landmarks are, the spanning trees are, 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 um, are extended to this node. Yeah, but they can. I mean, they can uh, choose any any node. I mean, any of the neighbors as a as a parent. Uh, uh, but is it also science fiction, or they have implemented something? I don't think they have implemented it. I mean, I have I haven't seen the implementation. Yeah, I mean, so far it's not. Uh, I don't think it is. Maybe it is, but I I haven't seen the implementation. So. Um, yeah, so there is also, yeah, so this was uh, Speedy Murmurs. Now I want to talk about trampoline. Uh, so a trampoline is, uh, so it's a big node, so it's uh, well connected with high memory and good computing power. And the idea is that uh, a trampoline node is a node to which the other nodes will outsource uh, root computation. So, for example, um, when Alice wants to pay Bob, she chooses a trampoline node, and then, uh, so she sends a payment to this trampoline node, and she also gives Bob's address, and then she leaves the root calculation to Bob to these trampoline nodes. Now, the good thing about this is that uh, nodes can uh, completely uh, get rid of root computation by giving, the, giving it to uh, trampoline nodes. Now, in this setting, uh, the problem is that, so there is a privacy problem because uh, the trampoline node knows both the receiver and the sender. So there is a way of improving this, which I think was proposed by Christian Decker. Uh, so instead of having just one trampoline node, uh, Alice chooses uh, a list of them. Now, then Alice sends a payment to the first one, T0, and she also sends uh, the list T1, Tn, and then uh, when a trampoline receives the payment, uh, they forward it to the next trampoline node. And when, when you say send a payment, you, you need to know the rules before sending the payment, right? Because they have to commit in order that they don't keep uh, the payment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you can... The dynamic the procedure to do the payment, you need to know always the route. Uh, the sending before sending... The route to the trampoline, you mean? I mean, if, if, you, send, if you send the funds, they can keep them, right? So the, the, the usual procedure is when you have a route, they, 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 they have a commitment that, uh, that is what uh, oh, but avoids that they steal the money in, in the... Well, no, because, I mean, uh, you can send... I mean, 
Okay, you don't send the payment, you send the HTLC. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You don't really pay it, you send the HTLC, is what I mean. You send the conditional payment. Yes, exactly. This, this is what I meant. Payment, I don't think so because uh, well you just need to have the hash for the onions you mean you're talking about the onions or no, any, 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 any composition of channels but I because think you are not so uh, that way to so directly the payment to the trampoline, you can send it like a normal yeah, you can. Like um, payment, and then the trampoline will do it. Because you, you just, if you want to... Yeah, right, right, right. And here, you, you are not going to say, I think, you are not going to say, it's directly sent to the trampoline nodes, your payment. You can do a uh, classic uh, routine, uh, uh, using another algorithm, routine algorithm, to send your payment to the trampoline node with the lightning, and then the so do you send the payment or the commitment to pay? No, it, it works exactly like what you have today in the HTLCs, but the difference is you don't need to know that there's a path between T0 and T1 and T2 and so on. Because if, if you just want to send HTLCs, you just need to have a hash. You don't need to... Uh... Yeah, but you have to decide where Pass, right? They're not sending this to anyone. Why, uh, why so, would... So this is what I ask. Do you need to know the, the full route or not? No, no I, don't, I don't think so. But you, you, you know the first... You, yeah, you, you know the, the trampoline. You know the first trampoline, so you know the route to yeah. the... Each one knows this. The, 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 the so uh, Alice... The next, the next one. Yes, they know, they know the, the, the next uh, trampoline. So each, uh, each trampoline knows the next trampoline. Uh, yeah, until the, the last one, TN, sends uh, the payment to Bob. And so we can do this in a way that um, each trampoline only knows, well, actually it knows, uh, I should have said TI plus one and TI minus one. Uh, but it only knows uh, the previous one and the next one, and not the others. Uh, this way, it, pr it protects. Uh, it's similar to also. Okay. Yeah, yeah, also similar. Uh, yeah, and the way to do that is with uh, uh, what they call nested onions. So remember that when I talked about routing, I said uh, I explained that uh, the payment system uses uh, multi-layered onions. So here with the trampolines, what you do is uh, you will have several onions. So at the beginning, if Alice chooses three trampolines, she does, uh, she constructs an, uh, an onion, uh, which is here symbolized in red. So the red onions are for the trampolines. So each and each layer of the onion is meant for a trampoline. So the first layer can only be decrypted by T1, the second by T2, and the last one by T3. And yeah, when Alice wants, uh, she sends it to uh, T1, she also needs onion layers for the intermediary nodes. So then around the, so she has the onion for the trampoline in the middle, and around this onion, she builds another onion with uh, three layers for B, C, and D. And so each intermediary node decrypts a layer, and then when the onion gets to T1, T1 on just receives um, the, the red onion, and T1 can decrypt the first layer, and the first layer indicates uh, the next trampoline. So then uh, T1 does the same. T1 uh, makes another onion uh, above the, the red onion, and then in a similar way, then T2 will receive the red onion, it will decrypt the first layer and do the same and send it to T3. And eventually T3 only receives the innermost onion. Uh, and this uh, is a way, this indicates the path to Bob and this is a way of keeping uh, privacy. Now, uh, yeah, so uh, this is how trampoline routing works. 
Uh, yeah, so as like I said, the good thing is that uh, Alice can completely outsource root calculation to the trampolines. Now the problem with this is, uh, first of all, it's uh, a threat to uh, decentralization because uh, the trampoline nodes, well, they have a, they have a, a huge importance in, uh, in this routing. And also uh, the path length, because uh, if you're choosing several trampolines and you can end up with a very long path so the, path, the length of the path is really not optimal, which can, which can also result in uh, high, higher fees. But, so you just yourself decide that you are a trampoline node and you tell it to your neighbors. Um, yeah, I think that's the idea, yeah. So this was trampoline. Um, yeah, so ant routing, uh, just in case you were, you were not in the last talk. So I gave a whole talk about this last time. So the way ant routing works is, um, so Alice and Bob agree on a random number, and then uh, each one, each of Alice and Bob will create a new number, which we call a pheromone seed. So, um, yeah, uh, so Alice's pheromone starts with a zero and Bob's pheromone starts with a one. But they're both con concatenated to that same number S. And the way it works is that uh, they will propagate their pheromone seeds to the whole network. So Alice sends PA to all her neighbors and Bob sends PA, a PB to all his neighbors. And then the nodes will relay uh, they will relay these pheromones uh, to the other nodes. And uh, this process continues until PA meets PB in a node. And when PA meets PB, this means that there is a route from Alice to Bob. So this creates what we call a match. Uh, and then when there is a match occurring, then the node at which the match occurs creates uh, a new seed, which is called a matched seed, um, which uh, it's just, you concatenate zero to, uh, uh, to P, or it should be PA. This is PA, not SA, and this is P of B, sorry. Uh, so you concatenate uh, zero, and this makes a matched uh, seed, and then the matched seed are sent back towards Alice and Bob, so I made a picture to make it clearer. So at the beginning, Alice and Bob, they have chosen a random number and they have, so Bob's pheromone is in red and Alice's pheromone is in blue and they just propagate uh, their seed everywhere. And now you see, here you have Alice's pheromone and here Bob's pheromone. And what is going to happen is they will meet here at this point. And so in this node, there is a match. And now the node just sends a match back to Alice and Bob, and this draws a path from Alice to Bob. Uh, yeah, something that I didn't mention is that uh, when, when the nodes forward a seed, uh, they only forward the pheromone if there is enough funds on the channel. So when doing this, uh, the nodes, I mean, during the process, the nodes make sure that the funds available on the channel are enough, uh, which is a good thing because Is it done oh. every time you want to pay, or is it, is it like permanent No, I mean, uh, depending on how much Alice wants to pay Bob. So you have to do this every time you want to send a payment? Yeah, um, it's pretty much. For, it's in, the, in the seed, you, you, add, you add the payment, the volume of the payment and the fee. Okay, so, 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 so people only broadcast if to the channels that are compatible with this volume. If you want to pay uh, five bitcoins and you, you are, you're not going to, to, to choose uh, channels that, that, that have lower, lower volume. Yeah, but what I mean is, this happens every time you want to pay. Every time yes. you want to pay, you choose a seed, I choose one. Alice and Bob communicate, they decide a random number of seed, yeah. 
And then indeed what uh, the, the, the pheromone is to concatenate the other one, but also you also put the, the, the payment, the volume so of the you touch and also a counter there. Or the, or you touch every night for each payment. The so that's the network for each payment. Yes. Well, each payment al also each if... Payment and you float the network with each... Yes. Yeah, but so the, the, the flooding is emitted by a counter. Yeah, so uh, there, there is a counter in the pheromone seed. Well, well I mean, the, the, the pheromone is what? It's, it's 25 bytes? I mean, it's something small. Yeah. The, the whole thing is small, so this is why you have to propagate. But the, the, they only propagate to the channels that are compatible for the volume. And the, each, each, each node deducts its fee, right? So you are sure that if there is a match, it is compatible with the volume. And you don't need to have any centralized information. And uh, the pheromone is uh, hold in each node about uh, how many times? How much time you will ah, yeah, use uh, the uh, uh, so Sorry, say again? Uh, how many times you will get the pheromone in the node? How many times a node? How long you keep it? How long you keep it? Yeah, oh, about that's three seconds, right? Yeah, I think we said two, uh, even. Most. Yeah. I mean, you, you're supposed to. You, you have to, to have a, a, time, a time to leave. Yeah, I mean, we, we think two seconds would be enough for, for the routing. Maybe you are going to explain it or not, I don't know. What you're no, talking. I'm not, I'm not going to. Ah. I, I was just, because I gave a talk about it but last time, so I just wanted to... Uh, yeah, you, you, have a, you have a mem pool of, of seeds, and it's renewed every second, you know. So essentially, you, uh, you, can, you can order them chronologically when you receive them, and you evacuate them. Uh, yeah, but there is no match. This is the key is that you don't keep different. For, I mean, it's, it's similar for the Bitcoin network with the transaction. You keep the main pool of transactions, but you keep it longer for, for yes, more than a minute. We're because talking about all transactions. So it's a lot of transactions in like network, not seven transactions, that's good. Yeah, and the, 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 this is the point, is that, is that uh, you, 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 you are able to, to have uh, many thousand transactions per second because you, you evacuate very, very quickly the main pool of seeds. See. The main policy, well, in, in the, in the, just if you miss the, 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 the other talk, so the numbers we have is to, you take um, a main pool of seeds for each node of 30 megabytes, right? You, uh. you can, essentially you can run about uh, an, 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 a maximum time of 3 seconds. Okay. Uh, then, then you can run about the so transaction. My question is about the protocol of uh, removing these seeds. Essentially, you yeah. you put them in in in, in groups of uh, uh, one tenth of a second, okay. and, and every every tenth of a second you remove one group. You uh, unless you keep you keep the ones that have been matched and have been true. I mean, if if they have been true, of course you keep you keep this, but this is just the the transactions that are going to run to your node. But this is the key, is that you should remove the, the, the data very fast so that the, it, doesn't, it doesn't overload the network. It's not because the uh, Bitcoin network is based on the flooding itself, but uh, Bitcoin is limited to seven transactions per second due to uh, all the things, the 10 minutes, or uh, between blocks, uh, mainly, and one megabyte. Uh, yeah, so you need, you need to kind of increase the block size or, or reduce the, the validation times of blocks, then, then, then you increase the, the capacity. So here, it's, it would be similar to say that, well, it's, it's not exactly, you don't function with blocks, but essentially every, every three seconds you, you have a new block, right? So yeah. you can imagine that, that the, the, instead of 600 seconds, you, you have something 200 times more efficient. This, this, this is what puts the order of magnitude of, of thousands of transactions per second. Um, yeah, so just to conclude about ant routing. Um, yeah, so uh, ant routing is completely decentralized because each node has exactly the same function. Like there is no spatial node like in beacon routing or trampoline. Uh, yeah, it's, it's full tolerant because, uh, yeah, since it's flooded anywhere, even, even if uh, a node or even if several nodes like cannot uh, respond or something, you will find another route somewhere. Um, yeah, and also, as I said, one of the issues with current routing is that uh, it, 
it finds routes with, which don't have enough funds to transmit the payment. But here, uh, this, this is made sure during the process of pheromone propagation, uh, the nodes make sure that there is enough funds available on the channel. Uh, it's also very good for privacy because uh, yeah, each node only knows the previous node and the next one, uh, they don't know the whole route. Uh, and yeah, recent, so we did some simulation and it shows that it can scale up to, well, at least 5,000, but actually, uh, well, this was the last simulation, but we have a way of improving it, which uh, would put it to 10,000 uh, transactions per second. Uh, if we uh, split the transaction, if you split the transaction, you have, okay. you have less uh, effective, effective tra transaction. If you split each uh, payment with 10, we have to divide this number by 10, right? Um, well, no, because, I mean, okay, when you, if you want to split the payment, yeah. then, I mean, when you do this, uh, what Alice gets is several routes, right? So if, if you want to split the payment, you don't have to propagate pheromones again for the second route. Because then, uh, I mean, here in the picture, of course, there is only one route, but because it's, it's a very simple network, but in general, there will be matches in many different places, and each match will give you a different route. So you do this once, and Alice ends up with several possible routes, and then she can split along yeah, a different well, route. Well, I think is that, well, I mean, we, have, we haven't really indicated the protocol to split payments, because, uh, of course, when, once you have several routes, you can... You can well, you, you can use atomic uh, multipath. Yeah, but then, then you will send smaller payments, not, not what is indicated on the original scene. Yes, okay, but this would... Ah, this would still work, yeah, but... When, when you have the route, you can make the payment. I mean, it's just, just to put yes. a, another indicator that you, you may want to split the payment. But if you pa passed two times with uh, multi-payment in one node, it cannot fail. Because uh, if you pass, if you choose to, uh, on a multi-payment, multi payment, you, you choose twice a node, so this payment can fail. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah, exactly. So you have to be careful because uh, I mean you exhaust some channels and, yeah, and, and, the first and pass you have several passes that, that have all yeah. passed through the same so channel. To be no, this is why I, I mean I, we haven't really write, wrote anything about uh, splitting okay. the okay. payment. Is that for also, you know, if you if you can do this in a fraction of a second and and you want to pay a big amount, ten bitcoins, then you can you, okay you can take a little bit longer, but you can you can do this uh, several times, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, yes, yes, it depends. Uh, well, I, I don't really see the issue with uh, multipath payment if you. I don't know if you yeah. should address the multipath payment or not. The, but I, I think once. The, the thing, no, it's, he's, he's right. If, if, you, if you imagine you have several paths, that, that possible path that goes through. through, through so the point. same? Okay. Huh? Uh, you, uh, the, first can, the, first, the first payment can pass. Uh, be, because that, that in, in, if, if, if it's done as, as, it, as it's written right now, these are paths that are compatible with the total volume. So still, yeah, sure. still, it's still if, if, you have, if you have several payments that go through one node, it will be okay. Yes, but uh, you have to, to limit your payment because uh, all the network will have not the capacity. No, 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 but this is, this is already, if, if the, the, the yeah, okay. capacity, there is no path. I mean, each node makes when 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 it forwards the, the seeds, make sure that it forwards to the neighbors. That are, and and if, if you indicate the total volume first, the path that you get sure. are okay for a smaller payment, and it will, will, will not be any conflict. Okay. I think, I think. okay yeah, I, I understand what you mean. But you don't have big channels, only meters and channels. You can pay one ten. You can but in, in, in it, the, the, the situation most likely is different is the, is the fact that you, you, you have some channels that have a small volume mm -hmm. and you may want to use them, but uh, that's another problem. Right? Yeah, because uh, okay. so you, if, you choose, if you choose a payment that is uh, higher than any volume of the network, you won't, you won't, have a, you, you won't get a path. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, I imagine that in, in a, in a, in a Normal situation, there will be uh, a volume that uh, that goes through almost with 100% probability, and, and 
and over over that volume is a critical volume. So you so that, that is the not a transaction. So then, then when you have, I think in the the idea is that the lightning network will be useful for a small payment. Sure. So because if you make a big payment, then no, no. they're just but for privacy is good. So I think people want to use it for privacy. privacy. Yeah. So but, but, then, but then you speed it. Then you speed it. A speed on sequence. Uh, do sequence. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different moment. You okay. make different payments, uh, not simultaneous. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you need to balance. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then you can hide the, the, the total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, the good thing is that also you can hide the total volume. And anyway, there is no much risk because the nodes only know that it comes from one neighbor, goes to another, but it doesn't know at least or what. And yeah, and then there, is, there is one thing, there was a paper that describes some form of attack because uh, most of the payments of the actual network go to one intermediate node. Uh, is that Alice can choose, when she gets the list of routes, can choose to have uh, routes that are longer than one node. Yeah, because the, the, there is a counter also included, uh, which, gives you, which gives Alice the length of, the, of each path. So, I mean, she during the process it collects. Uh, I mean, it counts the hops, but it also collects information about fees, for example. And so, uh, yeah. So Alice knows for each path. Uh, Alice has information about length and fees, so she can choose how she wa however she wants. Information about the total fee, but not the individual fee. No, not the individual ones. The it's just the, uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe they don't want to advertise how much is charged. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, okay, I, I had planned to, the last part, to talk about uh, channel imbalance, but it's already 7.36, so I think I will stop here. Thanks.